Hi, my name is Alexandra Grote, and I'm a postdoc at the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard, where I study infectious diseases caused by bacteria. Today, I'll be telling you about my research on a bacteria called Salmonella. As you can see under a microscope, Salmonella is a rod-shaped bacteria with many flagella, which are these long filaments that help the bacteria move around and stick to different surfaces. Even though it's small, Salmonella can cause a lot of problems for humans. There are many different types of Salmonella. Some can cause typhoid fever, while others cause what we call gastroenteritis. If salmonella can cause all of these unpleasant symptoms, can we tell which of these people is infected with salmonella? It's actually really hard to tell because while salmonella often makes people feel really sick, it can also cause what we call an asymptomatic infection where someone might not even know they have it. It's similar to how there can be asymptomatic carriers of COVID-19 where we have learned that people can spread COVID-19 even when they don't feel sick. Unlike COVID-19, which is a virus, Salmonella is a bacteria that is most commonly spread through contaminated food and water. It's most often associated with undercooked chicken and raw eggs. However, when things go wrong, it can contaminate many different food sources and has been found in tomatoes, lettuce, mangoes, and even chocolate. More rarely, Salmonella can also be spread person to person in most cases, salmonella is spread through what we in the infectious disease business call the fecal oral route, as if you needed another reason to wash your hands. When salmonella is ingested, it invades the digestive system. Our digestive systems rely on a diverse set of good bacteria that are essential for digestion as well as a healthy immune system. When salmonella invades, it triggers an immune response and inflammation, which is inhospitable for the good gut microbiota, but ideal for salmonella. This leads to a burst of growth and replication for salmonella at the expense of the resident microbiota. Because salmonella is so aggressive, the immune system gets to work. In most cases, a person's immune system is able to successfully fight off salmonella and restore order in the gut. However, sometimes salmonella decides to stick around and is able to evade the immune system defenses and sometimes even antibiotics. This is what we call persistence. Generally, when we describe a person as persistent, it's a good thing. It means someone is continuing on in the face of adversity. They have tenacity and determination. But infectious bacteria can also be persistent, meaning that they are able to stick around in the human body, evade the immune system, and fend off attacks by things like antibiotics. Persistence in bacteria makes them really hard to get rid of. So if we want to learn how to get rid of infectious bacteria, we need to learn how they become persistent. But how does salmonella do this? It goes from being an aggressive and troublesome bacteria into a bacteria that's able to hide out from the immune system and go unnoticed. It turns out the answer lies in the genome. Just like humans, bacteria have a genome. This genome provides them with all the instructions needed to build a bacteria and for the bacteria to grow and develop. These instructions for building the bacteria take the form of genes or individual instructions to build each part of the bacteria or help it grow and survive. Genes are encoded in a specific sequence or code that together encode for these instructions. When I look at the genetic code of the aggressive bacteria and compare it to the persistent bacteria, I was able to find small changes in the code between the two genomes. Then I looked at many different salmonella bacteria from hundreds of different patients and looked for changes in the genetic code when salmonella became persistent. I found that there were changes in most of the patients and that they were very often in the same type of gene, a gene called a global regulator gene. These are genes that actually control whether a bunch of other genes 
are made or not. This means that a single small change in the genetic code could have a large impact on the bacteria if it's in a global regulator. What we think is happening is this small genetic change has a big impact on how salmonella interacts with the person's immune system. Instead of provoking a large response, salmonella is now able to fly under the radar. Even though salmonella is still there, the immune system stops pursuing it. This means that even though the person is asymptomatic and doesn't feel sick anymore, they can still transmit salmonella to many new people. It turns out other infectious bacteria can also be persistent. Therefore, it's my hope that my research into how salmonella becomes persistent will lead to new treatments or preventions. Thank you for listening.